the song that we just sang it talks about how our soul wants to it wants to express the majesty of God and we are here tonight praising his name singing his songs and now we will meditate in his word it is our everything we're gonna read just the first four verses which says God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble therefore we will not fear even though the earth be moved and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea though its waters roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with its swelling there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord so that we may open our minds to meditate in his words tonight Lord your word is alive it brings us happiness in our lives We thank you that your Holy Spirit blesses us and that we can always hear your voice. We praise in Jesus' name, amen. The church may be seated. Every time that the people of God get together, there is an experience. The heavens open. Answers come from the Lord. And it was not different today. Today we prayed in favor of the service, and the Lord gave a very interesting, a very interesting vision. Because I believe that if we talk about it right in the beginning, many, many people might still be tired. And if I talk about it now, I think that maybe everybody now will be awake so that none of us leave here the way we came in that is the objective of the service the service is for god the praises are for god everything is for god because it came from him and we are just we just have some benefits so we come here we come in here one way and we want to leave another way the word says that there are promises in the word that if we come to him he will reveal, he will manifest himself, and he comes with his love and, and taking care of us, and he operates what was, what was, what, what he had in eternity for us. There is a blessing in eternity for us to not hear, and we need to receive it. So the Lord showed that in the Pope, a lot of water came out, and this water would refresh our souls. The whole church would would be showered in this water, and that is that is the service. He's showing us that sometimes we do this service and we almost forget that it comes from Him. Sometimes we come here and we come in sad, feeling that nothing is going our way, but in His presence we. We plead by the blood of Jesus, and then the songs begin to be sang, and we begin to feel His presence, and it begins to feel good. It brings happiness. The problems are a lot, but now they are outside. It is a moment of commun communion with the Lord. It is a time for us to hide in the rock. And He showed us tonight that there is flowing waters. It is interesting that there was a woman that she saw this. She would see the water. She would see everybody being refreshed. And she was still thirsty. We can maybe ask, what about the people that were in the waters? Were they not thirsty as well? And I know because the, those people are are people that are always at church and they are always being refreshed 
So this woman it shows that she does not have an experience personally yet. But the Lord showed that she wants, that he wants to give her an experience. The Lord said that he wants you to begin to know him. He wants you to know him like the water that takes us to the eternity. Not just to come here and say, Lord, I need this, I need that, and then leave with it, leave with what you need resolved. No, that's not what he wants. What he wants, it goes way past that. It's infinitely more, the operation of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, he showed that we read these four verses in this text. It could make a difference in me and you today. But our faith is what will determine it. When Jesus would cure people, he would always ask, what would you like me to do? Because he wants to hear from us what we need. Even though he is omniscient and he knows, he still asks. He, put, he, wants, he is asking us tonight, what would you like me to do? And in your heart, you need to pray. And you need to say, Lord, I need to know you more. I need to understand your plan. I don't want to just look like a Christian and come here and receive what, what you have for me in this life and then leave and not continue and, and have what you programmed for me in eternity. These four verses, it talks about a God that is our refuge that it, it is somewhere that we can hide the first the verse says that the Lord are our mountains and it says that we can run to him and we will be and he and he will protect us it says we can run to him and uh, and that he is our refuge there's nothing that we need to fear fear is not in his attributes not in the midst of grace and nothing. Fear is exactly the opposite of what God wants for man and what he wants from man. The fear, the fear puts us away from God and sometimes it puts us away from salvation. How many people, a family member begins to believe in the Lord, begins to serve the Lord, but, but they are scared and they're scared like if like if it is hard to serve the Lord but his word says that everyone should come to me whatever you have whatever you have that's bothering you come to me and I will refresh you but the fear the fear is a sentiment that is horrible but the verse that we read it gives us it gives us what we need to do to not fear. Even as scientists, the more, the most studious people, they cannot understand how everything works. The oceans and how everything turns and why and how everything is controlled by a God that is very detailed. And that is how even if even if the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, we will not fear. We are talking about catastrophes and horrible things. And the, the Bible says that even if things like this happen, happen to us, we should not be worried because he has control of all things. Even if even if the waters roar and be troubled, even if mountains shake. And I tell you, brother, the moment that we are living in, it is horrible. It is a time of anguish, a time of hurting. And people without Jesus, they, they walk and they go everywhere and they go to different places and they're trying to find answers and they're trying to prepare and they ask questions and, and answers and everything and they try to find a solution for the problems with resources of this life. And the question is, 
Is there a solution in the midst of everything that is wrong? In the midst of everything in this world, in the middle of chaos, will an answer come? No. Because the world is already in a bad place. And what the devil wants to do is kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to kill. He wants to steal your faith and destroy every possibility that you might be a friend of God. And that is the Lord's objective, to be our friend. What we need to want more and more from the Lord is to listen. Because because the Lord knows everything and with his grace and with his revelation and with the proximity that we have to him and as we get closer he has revealed many 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 things many times we we cannot even believe everything that happens and man that awaits on the Lord just for this life is the worst man and until the third verse, it is stuff talking about this world, the corruptness of the meat, and everything that is wrong with the world. It is everything that goes around here. But in the moment that we have an encounter, a real encounter with the Lord, in the moment that we go to the Lord and we go to Him and we give our all to Him, during whatever is going on in your life and after we know him for real and we tell him Lord you are the Lord of my life now I accept you as my savior take over everything in my life I'm confused Lord take care of me Lord and then he comes and he picks us up and he shows us what he knows he instructs, us, he instructs us and we walk in his path. Lord, take care of me. And the Lord comes. And he comes with his angels. And he helps us. And he cures us. No matter what our necessity is. And then we come in the fourth verse. And we say, there is a lake in which there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God. And this is the water from the beginning where we talked about the vision of the water coming out of the pulpit. That is the water. That is the water that the Lord has for us. It comes from eternity. It goes through us. It refreshes us. And it, re it refreshes those who have not received it yet. And it helps us understand eternity so that we can go back. If you are going through troubled times, so am I. Are you going through anguish? Are you suffering? All of us are. But with Jesus, if we have him as the fountain of water in our life, brother, sister, we go over everything. We can go through anything that happens because we know that wherever we go, it is exactly to the river whose stream shall make the glad the city of God. We will be with the Lord in, in his glory. And that is why we should not, we should not w await for Jesus for everything for this light. We will have victories here, but our great victory will be in eternity. And when we look up and when we put all our hope only on the Lord, we understand that this river that make glad the city of God, he comes in our midst and he comes through. He is visiting us right now. Open your heart. Feel his presence. Feel his presence that he, he is the one that was already here awaiting for us.
Sending our service. But there is more information that came from internally. It came that there is here a woman in which, in her heart, she's not believing any of this. She's not believing in the word. She is. She doesn't even believe it. She has doubts that God even is alive but and he is not showing this to he's not showing this to expose you but he is saying this so that you know that everything that everything that you think he is telling you now that he that he knows that everything that you think and he is trying to show you that he is alive and he talks in your heart there's no anguish there's no sadness there is nothing that he cannot resolve the lord is at our disposal and he is ready to operate and he wants you to leave this thought that you have and that you begin to believe him you are listening a truth that is not mine that it is not it is known here you are this this truth is coming from eternity this everything Everything that he, is, that he is saying, it is the truth. He wants to refresh your 
Your life he is he is in our midst, he becomes happy when we are with him. Everything that he does it makes everybody happy. Open your heart and let the Lord operate in your life. We are being prepared to go and live in the new sanctuary. One more song. And now the church can the church can glorify the Lord because He is the one that is preparing us. taking care of us. He hugs us. Our, he makes our hearts happy. This is the God that we serve. that today we live in the world technological 
there are many problems. Sometimes. Sometimes if uh, it doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what uh, makes you sad. It, nothing matters because when we meet the Lord in eternity, because the suffering, everything that happens here, it does not compare to the glory that is prepared for us. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. And this glory, it belongs to those who love the Lord, the faithful church. The faithful church has the right for this glory. A word of glorification. Lord, we thank you for transforming our lives. We thank you for giving us the certainty that, that our name is written in the book of life. We thank you, Lord, that this wonderful day is coming, Lord. This great event in which you will be with our church, Lord. We thank you because in that place there will be no more sadness and we will be in eternity and there will only be and there will only be victory Lord we praise you and we thank you because until now you have helped us Lord you did not say that it would be easy but you told us to to force ourselves to be better in your presence Lord and even with so many problems Lord your people still is going to eternity. We know of the promises you made us, Lord. We praise you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, receive. Take us. Take us so that we are ready for your arrival, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We have the Bible school for school tomorrow. Tomorrow at 7:30. Those who identify with the with any visions you can raise your hand and we will come to you and we will pray for you to clear things up for you. Peace of the Lord to everybody. Thank you.